You might be wondering how this train is able to balance and move on only two wheels. This is because this is a self-balancing monorail train, first patterned by Lewis Brennard in the year 1903. And although it was never developed beyond the prototype stage, it was an engineering marvel at that time. The train is able to balance and move on two wheels with the help of a device called a gyroscope. Now, a gyroscope is a device that can maintain its orientation regardless of its base movement. It has a spinning wheel or discs in which the axis of rotation is free to assume any orientation by itself, and thus creating a phenomenon called gyroscopic precision. This gyroscopic force is what helps the object to maintain its orientation. Now we understand what a gyroscope is, let's start this project by building a gyroscope. This type of gyroscope is called a motorized gyroscope because it uses an electric motor to spin the discs. There are other types of gyroscope that could use hydraulics or simple four engines to spin the discs, but this should work just fine. Now let's build the train's chassis and mount the gyroscope on it. Our train's chassis is now complete. It's time to do a few tests and see if this gyroscope can actually balance this train on a single rail track, monorail. Now, I'm going to try to balance this train on this monorail. Of course, if I try to balance it now with the gyroscope off, it's not going to balance because this structure is pretty much unstable. But once I put on the gyroscope, it should balance hopefully. Once the gyroscope is on, I have to hold the train down in position till the gyroscope produces enough force to balance the train. So let's see. <gasps> it balances! Wow! It's incredible! Now I want to find out if it can move on these two wheels while being balanced by this gyroscope. So yeah, let's find out. Impressively, the train managed to balance and move on two wheels. You can see the gyroscope constantly tilting as it balanced out the effects of gravity trying to tilt the train. All that was left now was to complete the train's body. And for the train's body, I used old soft drink tin cans. Flatten them into a rectangular piece, increase the total length by adding other piece and then complete the train's body. I finished up using these color tapes to give it a more train-like appearance.
Overall, the train was a success. Although it had problems bending into curves, this was because I used only a single gyroscope. In Brennan's design, he used two gyroscopes spinning in opposite direction, and a gear was placed between them to prevent them from going in the same direction as they tried to maintain their rotation, thus forcing the two gyros to rotate with the whole train. But I hope to be the better one soon. If you like this video, please make sure to like, share and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video. Peace out.